Okay, biophilia is a very important concept for the world, not just Singapore. We have shown a good example of how biophilia has been applied in Singapore, and, and, and in that sense, uh, we, we have made a contribution. But biophilia globally is the next stage of human history. Human beings have to readjust themselves to a very new order, which is the biological order. We cannot continue to rape the planet Earth and expect that you know, we will not have any repercussions. We are already facing the repercussions. Climate change, right? Uh, unfavorable weather conditions, terrible uh, atmospheric uh, haze, forests are burning all around us. So biophilia has to have an impact on our immediate surroundings in Singapore, but definitely in relation to the region in which we live and beyond. So that's our future. Our future is to make a contribution to the world. The biggest gap is biophobia. We believe in biophilia at a distance, right? You know, we love the butterflies, but we don't like the caterpillars, right? We like the forests, we like the nat natural greenery, but we are afraid of mosquitoes. So, so this is something which uh, we need to overcome. And to overcome it means that we have to understand nature a lot more, and, and that nature appreciation is not simply a visual uh, experience. It has to be uh, infused with a lot more knowledge. So this is where uh, a lot of work to be done. Okay, when you talk about people, you, gotta talk, you have to address the issue generationally, right? The older generations uh, who are now probably in the 70s and 80s, um, their idea of nature is conditioned very much by, by belief systems. For example, uh, my mother, for example, uh, refused to allow ant parks to plant a tree in front of her house because it will block the good luck coming into the house. Right? So these kinds of beliefs uh, affect uh, their responses, right? Um, also, if you notice the planting uh, choices, the, 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 the species choices uh, along HDB corridors and so on, the number of lucky plants a lot, right? Like pomegranate, for example, is a lucky plant because uh, it, it scares away evil spirits, okay? Then the next level of plants that is uh, very popular are herbal plants, medicinal and um, uh, helpful plants. And only the, the third area would be uh, symbolic plants, plants that, uh, are, that promote or denote status. So the, so, so the aesthetics, the... the uh, values attributed to, to roses or to, or to uh, various kinds of colourful plants. So those are the choices. So those choices are not driven by, you know, love of nature of plants as such. Plants connote various values and, and, and meanings. When, when the West, Western people talk about nature and plants, Mostly it's, it is experiential and it is aesthetic and to some extent ideological, right? Tree hugging and all that stuff. Um, I don't think we have reached that stage. I think the younger generation are beginning to appreciate uh, ecosystems, right? Particularly say coastal forests or Sungai Bulo or Bukit Timah Nature Reserve. They're beginning to understand ecosystem, right? So the, 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 the tearing of the different layers of the, of the rainforest, the, um, the biodiversity and so on. So they begin to appreciate. But still there is a certain uh, uh, abhorrence of uh, uh, nuisance uh, plants and animals, right? Plants that make you itchy, you know, you want to keep away from them, you know, 
Mosquito is still a problem. Dragonfly is okay, butterfly is okay, but creepy, creepy crawlies are not, not high on the agenda. 